Hello everybody, welcome. I am going to give you a video today that's going to be very helpful to you. I am in front of this tree here, this grafted tree. It was a Kerry and I putting it over to an emerald tree and it's going great. I had put some other grafts on there that appeared to take but now they appear not to take. And today's video about grafting mangoes. These grafts I use are called cliff grafts and there's other types of grafts. But today we're going to learn how to do bark grafts. And a couple of days ago, I put a video out with a man that was talking about breadfruit. Well, he's also a grafter and he does a bark grafting. And we're going to look all about that today in today's video. So here it goes. All right, everybody, here we are at Hidden Acres Farms. And uh, there's Steve. Uh, they're in Fort Lauderdale. And here's his amazing fruit trees. I'll link below to some videos we've done here in the past. And this is Ken. And uh, we just did a video about breadfruit. I'll put that link below. But we're going to do a video today because Ken is grafting mango trees. Uh, how do you learn how to graft mango trees? Well, I took a few classes at Fairchild with Richard Campbell and Norris, and um, I went home and failed miserably at it. I went to Haiti with the Trees at Feet Foundation uh, twice and, and grafted and never knew if they had worked or not. <laughs> I was pretty well discouraged with it and said, I don't want to do this anymore. But then I, I did one graft and it succeeded, and then I got addicted to it, which is probably the case for most people who have a little success. And when I retired from my career, I, I, I pushed myself on Steve and as a grafter, and he took me on, and uh, I've been grafting trees for him and other people since then. Okay, so very cool. So here we are in uh, one of Steve's trees, and when Steve first planted his mango farm, he was all about Namdak Mai and what else? That was your Nam main one. Namdak Mai and Pickering. He was all excited, but then he found out about Zill's varieties, and he had all these amazing trees, and he said, I gotta change these over. And like here one, comes... Valencia Pride is one that I've kind of lost the battle on trying to keep that one under control. Um, I still have two. We've been changing over the Valencia Prides that we originally put in. So yeah. we're, we're doing those two different, more uh, prestigious varieties, you might say. This is one that Ken's been working on for a while. Yeah, so this one is a Valencia Pride. Uh, so a lot of your trees are being top worked here. So you use different types of grafts, or one graft do you find best, or what? Yeah, um, so originally we did like on the larger trees everyone else we we cut a branch off and wait for shoots to come out and then we graft on the shoots and that, that works very well um if you do the whole tree at once like that you're going to get a lot of sun and it, it can get hot in august and july and you have to wait for the shoots and then wait for the graft so i was wondering what can we do this a little more expedient so i went to a bark bark grafting and, and this is i didn't invent these these are common grafts where we saw off the uh, branch and then insert the scion under the bark and then let it come out and it, this works pretty well but if you do a whole tree at once the sun will bake your graphs and you're going to lose a lot and that that's a problem too so i started thinking well can i keep the shade the canopy intact while the graft is is uh developing so um i use sort of a modified bar graft and again i didn't invent any of this i'm not taking the credit for that but i came i started using a technique where i cut a little u-shape in the bark peel it away and insert the cyan there and keep the canopy to see if that would work and it works um, i won't say it's as successful as a cleft on a nice green shoot but it does keep the canopy intact um, here's a a bar graph of the little you can see it's shooting out these are pretty young so they're not all shooting out yet um, some aren't going to survive that's just the bottom line um, but here's one that was grafted right into the bark okay wow it's all wrapped up so you really can't see some it people will actually they'll cut their tree and then do the bark graft right into the yes oh, now okay. i've done that and it works but i suggest i advise don't cut that closer than 18 20 inches from the ground because you'll get a lot of splash up from the ground when it rains that'll bring rotting fungal fungal spores onto the wood and it'll rot i've got a 50 year old tree i did that too at home and i had success with my grafts but now the wood's rotting inside of it and i don't know how that's going to proceed so and also if you cut the tree if it's a big tree you cut it too low you can kill the tree right 
actually you can cut it as low as you want the tree will grow back however you get those fungal rot problems that may it may kill the tree eventually so i had a giant tree like real old, maybe 50 years old and i cut it and i think i cut it too low because it killed it it did okay yeah, yeah. it probably got when it rained uh, from the soil some of those fungal spores that would splash up interesting and, and cause rot in the wood so here's an example of what you're doing here so this was originally a uh, valencia pride now you're moving it over to you got all these different grass on there different grass on no there. this these are shoots these are not grafts I know, here's yeah, a graph right. we're putting guava i believe saint alone uh that variety on here so there's more than one variety you're putting on this tree and we're like mostly it peach cobbler on there. we did yeah we we might have um okay so getting back here where the shoots are so typically the way a graft is often done is that they cut that when the shoots are growing back they'll graft onto the shoots the cliff graft but you're suggesting or experimenting with even before these shoots come going right into the box yes and that's not again i didn't invent that and i'll show you some in a minute where we did let the shoots grow and grafted i just did them a week or so ago and they're starting to shoot out but i also wanted to show you us this is what a bar graph looks like after it's taken and you can see it's, this is all grafted material uh, and it, it looks the first question we have and everybody probably that looks weak but if a year or two or some i did a couple of years ago you can't even see that joint they've just grown together so tightly and there's no weakness from this graft. and when you get the the budwood for that and you cut it do you cut it like a cliff graft on both sides or only one side i, I cut it like a veneer i cut one side a little wedge on the back side so i just slide it under the i make a flap you know, make two cuts on the bark peel it back a little bit it's got to it's got to be loose and not too tight on the wood and usually it is if it's real tight on the wood you may not succeed but once you push it under it'll slide right along that cambium the cells of the cambium and that's the beauty of that it finds the cambium you don't have to look for it you don't have to match it up right yeah it matches up really well when you slide it in and then the biggest challenge of i'm finding on top working is rain at times when it really rains like this summer you'll look inside your wrap and it'll be full of water and i've convinced myself that that's causing a lot of rot of our grafts i just uh, unwrapped some the other day that i did and they were all well attached it takes a month or six weeks to really attach like that so these grafts succeeded that long and then they just died so i'm pretty sure it's from all that rain getting in there and the heat causing rot so that's a bit of a challenge for top working a tree I so think. they come out and rot or they just didn't even come out no, they didn't even come out the but they wouldn't have attached if they died right I away got you. so when you peel this back do you have any a knife maybe you could show us an example on something of how you would peel it I, well i i, I, I can there's two different graphs right here the one that's the bark graph you cut off and one yeah i wanted to show on that so like when you peel it are you, are, is it bendable so or are you leaving this it is my knife <laughs> all i do is make a cut the length of my grafting knife and i push down on it to get it to go through the wood to yeah. through the bark to the wood and i come and do i've saw this off previously yeah but i do it right next to it kind of rock it to get it down to wood and then i take my knife and get under the bark and it'll come loose i peel it back a ways I prepare my scion, then I just slide it under the bar. When, when you say you peel back away, you stick your blade in or something? I just actually pry it with my knife edge. Got ya. Until it gets started and get it back a little ways to make sure that it's peeling at the cambium and I'm not right. pulling wood or bark. But this is the only place that's connected, like that you didn't cut the, yes. this side of it. Okay. So I slide it under and then I'll have a flap, right, of bark. Yeah. I'll cut that back a little bit and then I just do my wrap. You're cutting back the this oh i see what you're saying so you're cutting the i got I, you. I slide my scion under i've got a flap of bark i cut it back a little bit and then i make oh look at that you're even better we have uh not your finger we have yeah you almost you don't see what you did with this one you take that old one off yeah try to find when it's upright <laughs> And when you're doing that, when you're doing it straight into the bark, you do it same same idea, right? Yeah, here's one that succeeded. You can I just tied that to keep it strong while it heals, but you can see that it slid under the bark. 
when I was growing up. So like you don't this. only have to do it at the end, like here. You could do it in the middle or anywhere. You could like put it anywhere here, right? Yeah, even like this one. If this one didn't take yet, but that's the same thing, same idea. As you see, there is. And this doesn't really have to match up exactly to the size of the scion. So you just cut yes. band there and just slide it in. Yeah. And I, from what I've done now, I would probably say this is more successful if you can protect it from the sun. Yeah, this is, stuff. yeah, I, I put acrylic paint on some of the wraps trying to keep like a shade. So if you had to do it over, like I know, would you put a bag over it, a paper bag or foil? I have tried that and, it, and I've tried foil. We put leaves around it. And for whatever reason, it doesn't seem to help very much. I, I can't Don't explain it. Don't make a big it. difference. Okay, There's bound to be a better way. <laughs> since you got the knife, if you want to show us, give us an idea. What's yeah, let me, uh, well, let me show you this, this modified bark where we go into older wood. Now, I've also found when it's really, like that wood down there, that bark is really thick. This is real. it's not going to. It's too hard, <laughs> too thick. So if I find one like this, I'll make a cut kind of all the way to wood, just rock it a little bit. See okay. that cut? Cut right there. And straight places. And then I get my knife and I go down to wood. You don't need a grafting knife for this. It, make it like that. And I do the same thing here. Get down the wood. Make another cut. There, so I have cut, cut, cut. I will pull away some of this so that it doesn't pull it away. That doesn't push on the scion away, just so it lays better. And I'll do that. Carefully, of course. So now if I get under there, actually I, I peel it first, it's a little easier, but let me get, pull that up loose. See, it's starting to come. Now it's taking some wood with it, we'll have to fix that. And it's, it's not a very good one. But we're getting too much wood on this, not, it's very tight. Right, there we go. Now it's coming, I think. It's, that's not a good one. Okay. It's not. We're doing it quicker than usual, too. Well, the bark should be loose. So this is what not to do. Okay. Well, you don't know until you do it. Yeah, yeah, okay. But we'll slip it, it, it may be because of the weather drying out that the bark's tight. So if you're a professional and you're doing bud grafting, you got to pick that rootstock when it's the bark is slipping so that you can slide it under. This bark is very tight. I could probably make it work, but I, I don't, I wouldn't even graft this. See, look at, it's just very tight, the bark. So you're going to go, be going deep. It's going to yeah, slide it's pretty not even, much. It's don't gonna, even show that. <laughs> okay. That's how you figure out. When you yeah. Exactly. It's important to show because that's what you Well, usually it, it, it's very loose on these bigger ones. I could, I'm trying to find one I can get up and do it so you can see it. Idea, though. We could try over here. And he labels them as well. Always, always, them. always label, label. I can try this one. Let me get on this. Yeah. Side. If that one's tight, this one might be tight. I had that problem with a VP last year. Okay, now I'm going to trade places. So you got the one line there. So you got your three cuts made and then you peel it. This is better. And I'm pulling that bark a little bit just to get it started. Sometimes you have to cut it again. You get it all the way down to the wood. And you can see how it's pulling away. So that's good. Yeah, so then I'll make my little You cut that so it has room. That's just so it, yeah, it has room. Now I'll get a scion. I can take some of that off. And I'll slide oh, you it. You could actually take some of that off? Yeah. It gets in the way. 
This is sticking too, though. So Does it matter if you leave it or cut? Take that off? Does no. It, no. Okay. I don't think so. This is sticking too. It's. Okay, we're going to slide it under there if we have a scion. So you would take a scion, cut half of this one side of the scion. Just like a veneer and slide it into the, the flat. Sometimes you have to pull it a little bit. And you don't have to match it up or anything. Amazing. No, because the cambium, you're just splitting the cambium so it's already matched. So we'll see That's like my scion. That. And then when you wrapped it with this, what is this that you use? This is survey flagging tape. It's okay. cheap at Home Depot. I don't love it because it's very thin. Grafting tape the wrapping tape is a little thicker and it's a little easier but you can also see these pretty good too but i use this in the in some of the caribbean where they don't have access to grafting tape they can get this um and when it's hey, up in the tree go. you can see it you know later so and they just wrap it up like you would any other graft and then how long before you know if that took or didn't take well that's a good question um sometimes they pop out fairly quickly and you know that it's a great graph you don't want it to pop within 10 days because it's too early and it, the graph can't support the growth and it'll die probably really 10 okay. days two weeks nothing less you don't want it to pop i Ask just did a graft on a, a regular graft on a on a tree and it, in two days it came out that's scary because yeah. it probably will die I can't promise you that, but yeah, well, consider that you have to provide water and nutrients for that new bud to grow. Sure. And you're on a graft joint, which has not healed, you know, yeah, so yeah. it's hard to get that to there and support, and support it. I, and I've had some grafts that did nothing and then three months later they popped out. Well, I had one I did last, because I write everything on there. Uh, last September, I grafted a guava mango onto one another one and it looked dead. I unwrapped it. Okay, I'll, I forgot to cut it off basically. And I looked last week, and there's a bud coming out of it. So as long it's as a it's year, as long as it's green, then there's a chance, right? As long as it, even if it's not green, if it's still smooth and not all puckered and dried out, it may do something. Well, let me ask you this, Ken. On this one, you did you cut this and you did the graft at the end. Yes. The one you just did was in the middle. Right. Is there, does it make a difference? Well, I knew that. It, that I prefer this, but sun is your killer. But I know the full canopy here is going to protect that, so I can do that. But you prefer to cut it and then just come in like this right. and put it and slipping it in. Right. That when I do it on the whole thing, my success rate is lower. Okay. But I need to keep shade on it. You know, now what about in. here? So should you cover this when you do so this? So normally I use a grafting, a pruning sealer. Like I like Tanglefoot because it dries nicely. It's black. It's messy. Uh, so I've just been getting acrylic from the hobby store. White acrylic Could you paint. put more of this plastic over that part? I could. Okay. Um, but I find it you could. I can't tell you it's better. One's better than the now other. You definitely wrap it in this. What do you wrap? This is buddy you, tape. You wrap them in buddy tape. And okay. there is a bud right here swelling. You probably can't see it. It's on this side. Okay. Um, okay. But I can see it's still green. It's starting to swell. Oh, so that's, go. yeah, look at that's that. probably going to work and pop out. Now, would it help if you took like a plastic bag and just tied it here just to keep this dry? You can do that. And a lot of the other countries, they don't have buddy tape. So they use plastic bags and there you can buy sleeve bags in bulk like 500 and you know it's a few cents even each. with buddy tape it's still just to keep this dry would a plastic bag help if i use a bag i probably wouldn't use buddy tape okay buddy tape's kind of expensive not per sheet but it's 40 dollars a roll it takes time if you're grafting a lot you time is your thing so doing so. it this way and putting a bag over it and what would you tie the bag with a rubber band or something i might use this okay i might use a rubber band whatever i had do you and do I, all fruit trees this way or just mangoes? Um, I haven't used the bar graft on, I'm trying to think if I did it on Sapodilla with, it worked fine. I, at home, I'm doing some cocoa trees, cacao. I think you did um, back here. I did a, a bar graft on one of them. Did I? Maybe, I don't remember. <laughs> How's your success um, with uh, jackfruit trees? I haven't done jackfruit. Okay. Um, I've tried to graft breadfruit on the jackfruit. 
and it, it all failed. Doesn't mean you can't. I know they do it somewhere. Sure. There's a professor in Hawaii, uh, Noah Lincoln. Uh, he does a lot of work with indigenous Polynesian cropping systems. Fascinating guy. But I believe he's got an experiment trying different grafting techniques on breadfruit, different rootstocks. Now, this is called a bark graft. There's a number of names, bar graft, rind graft, crown graft. If you read a, a propagation book, you'll see all kind of names for it. Yeah, because I saw Richard Campbell do that straight into the bark on the yes. ground. On yeah, and it works. It's a good graft. Again, it's, the sun is your killer. This time right. of year, we're getting better. But August, July, September, early September, that sun is brutal. Now, Walter Zill, uh, he does uh, bud grafting. Do you know anything about that? Yeah, I know I've had zero success with it. <laughs> However, I just did four or five uh, over the weekend at my house. Um, he's got a nice little book. If you like mangoes, read his little yes. book, and he's got wonderful it's pictures. His book's it's excellent. great, and I've done everything, but <laughs> so yes. far, no good. How many trees do you have in your yard? I have, I counted them this morning, I have seven trees and 23 varieties of mango. I don't advise that, but I like to play with my trees. Now why don't you advise that? you got to manage those. You know, different growth rates, uh, a lot of different pruning challenges. For me, it's fun, and I do it because I like it. But if you don't want to mess with your trees like I do, don't do more than two or three growth varieties on a tree. How much land do you have? Quarter acre. Not How much. far apart do you keep your seven trees? Well, my trees are, the closest are probably nine, ten feet. Some maybe a little closer. And does that work for them, do you think? It works for me because I prune and I'm on them every day and playing with my trees. If you don't want to do that, don't do tight plantings. Sure, sure. All right, well, thank Let you. Let me show you some shoots that we did. Oh, I just please, this morning. please, thank you. So this tree's almost totally grafted, I think, to switched over to Super Alfonso and yeah, maybe CAC too, maybe? Maybe, maybe Super Alfonso. So most of the, you can see these are bar grafts from previously, all oh, these. Look at that, there's some that were ta had taken. Wow, look at that, there, there you is. go. Yeah. So not no one to be concerned when you take so up now should you unwrap it at a certain time or I usually go about two months and unwrap to see what's going on underneath it and then you can leave it it doesn't matter you don't have I can to leave it. it sometimes like the other day at my home I had one of these and it took fine but the wind blew and it started to fall back so I just tied around is it a it. danger of leaving it wrapped for a very long time. Uh, people do that. I think you, the, hot, the longer it's wrapped, the more chance you have a fungus getting in there and, and hurting it. Oh, so you're doing all of these like this. Look this at whole that. tree is, wow. well, look up here. Here's a nice example of that graft I just showed you. See it on the bark? Yeah. Look at that. And that oops, that's got to shoot. So we're going to have to, we'll let it go a little longer, then we'll lop off all the extra stuff. When you say the extra stuff, what do you mean? Well, that the old tree above it. Oh yeah, great question. So there's an older graph you done. So once that takes, where and when do you cut off the rest? Well, I'll cut it about even with it so I can, if I need to secure it for strength, I'll tie it back to the, the parent tree, I'll Which call it. Yeah. When you say even with it, like, so what do you mean even with it? Like, I, mean, I need an example to show you. You can show us that one, point up there. If I could reach that, I would, uh, so, so see where the top, okay, that one, see where the top leaves are? Yeah. Of the, of the graph. Yeah. I'd probably cut it right around there where those fork, those limbs fork out. I got you, yeah, okay. And then I can, see, I already wrapped it around the trunk just to support it until it gets a little stronger. Got you, got you. Oh, I see. And so I'll leave that there. for the, the winter. Uh, you know, I'm not going to take that off just for strength. And then you'll cut it. Because it okay. gets windy this time of year. And, okay. Um, it's good to have support. I'll show you. Uh, here's another of these. Here's another of these. I don't even know what to call this kind of graph, but I haven't unwrapped that yet. I'll do it in a couple of weeks, but it's shot out nicely. So I'm going to wrap it in a couple of weeks. But it's coming out nicely. So another flush when it's just doing, I'll probably cut it off here 
Oh. And maybe tie it around there just to strengthen it until it okay. gets a good strong. And then strong. will this to, will this keep once you cut it here, if this keeps growing shoots. Once I cut it there, it's gonna make shoots from the mother we'll call it parent tree. We gotta keep those off. Keep those off. Because those produce a hormone that will inhibit bud form growth here. And what about shoots here? Will it grow? They're okay the because here? that hormone it goes by gravity, it goes down. Ultimately we'll keep those all off because we want to change this away from Maha Chinook, I guess it is. Now here's yeah. another uh, a graft you've done. Yeah, that's starting to come out. And somebody told me when you graft recently, they said, leave the leaves under the graft. On what a seedling, I, that? that's for sure on a seedling if you can, because that helps draw water into the rootstock, which is important. Um, this tree's got plenty of leaves to pump water, so it doesn't matter. I got you. But this is a shoot, this is a traditional way of top working, changing of a tree. You prune it, let these shoots come out, and then you, that's a cleft on the shoots, and that's a great way to do it. It just takes longer, because you gotta wait for the shoots, and then you gotta wait for the, the grafts to take. Sure. So if, I had done a bar graft here that didn't work. Well, you gotta wait for the graft to take either way, but you're just waiting for the shoot, that's why it's long. So you add that time for the shoots. But, so this failed, this graft here. But it's okay, because I got the shoots and I can So that would the be shoots. the best way is to try the try this, and if it doesn't work, just wait for the shoots. Okay, yeah, you haven't lost anything. You've, you may have gained time, but you haven't lost anything. Now let's say in this area, if you wanted on this whole tree, let's say you wanted to move it over to this... Uh, see Super, that's uh, Super Alfonso. Super Alfonso. So when would you, if now that this took, how much growth would you wait before you cut everything else off the tree? A couple flushes, maybe two flushes. Okay. And, and if you were I gonna do graft on here too. You know, so I, I okay. don't always have enough scions that are ready. So if you were gonna do something like this, and let's say these two were the grafts you want, when would you cut the rest of the tree? I mean, you'd cut uh, the rest of the canopy off after a couple of grass. I mean, would it hurt if you cut the rest of the tree? I want, well, the rest of the tree has grafts on it. I know, I'm saying so. in general, if somebody wanted to change over there right. to this one variety, and you got it here, it took, when do you say, okay, I can get rid of everything else? Well, I'm gonna try all my major trunks that have a graft. When they, when I get maybe two flushes on those grafts, if they look good and strong, I'm gonna cut the tree. But I don't wanna cut it while well, the sun is killing me, like in August or early September. This time of year, I'm, I'm okay because the sun's down a little bit, but. The sun's a killer on grafts. Yeah. You know, What's I, the most varieties you have on one tree at your house? Uh, too many. <laughs> I have one tree with seven on it. That's too many. I don't advise that. What do you recommend? One or two? I mean, two or three at most? Yeah. Four is the most, but you you got to be ready to manage your tree. So that's... Even if you have two, you got to manage them. Yes. Yeah. And what you're trying to do is match the vigor. If I add more varieties to my tree, I want them to be same, similar in vigor. And vigor is the growth rate. Sure. Because I don't want one taking over the other. And I have that at home where I have a lemon zest, which is vigorous, with uh, rosy gold. Oh. But I put the, ro the, the lemon zest on the north side of the tree. The sun is primarily south, so I'm not shading it. Got so it. you got to think through those kind of things. If you got you, got you. Wonderful. Well, there's a lot of trees here. Super Alfonso's one, and you put the date there as well. You have to do that. If you don't put a label on your grafts, you failed, even if it grows, because you don't know what it is. Now, is that the way you label them? Yeah. And so, you don't put a label, you just write on the tree? Well, I, it's bad luck if I label the grafts. It'll fail. <laughs> <laughs> so this one took, you can see that. Yeah. But I need to know what the variety is, because I I won't remember in a week. Exactly. And the date tells me when I'm ready, to, how to, manage it you know because exactly. i'll do this for somebody and i won't remember what i did or... well if people want to learn more about how to do this what would you recommend where they can go to learn besides, how to graft yeah besides videos on the internet videos on the, there are some excellent videos on the internet but it's like playing the piano you can't learn by watching somebody else play so get some technique from the videos if you can find a grafter great find them um but practice, practice, practice. That's what I tell you, practice. Practice on hibiscus. It's easy. You can learn how to do your cuts. It takes in three weeks. You can mix up the flower colors on one tree. It's so easy. 
but just gross plant seeds. I do that now. I plant all your mango seeds, all your avocado pear seeds. Plant them and graft them. Graft the tree back onto itself for practice. Take this, take this, cut it, graft it back onto itself just for practice. Because you got to get a feel for those cuts on the scion. That's the tick. You got to feel those cuts and how they should be. And that's what takes practice. Wonderful. But you got to do it. And be ready for failure and don't let it discourage you. And then weather-wise, it's better to do it in the summer or the winter? When's well, it better? winter, people don't graft mango in the winter. Uh, we're, the mangoes tend to go a little dormant in our winter, getting ready to push the, the flowers. Um, so we don't want to, we can't find scions, and we don't want to cut them because they may flower. So we, we, we don't do it in the wintertime. Spring is good. But you have to watch the scions. They may look have buds, but they may be flowers, and you don't want to cut those off. So finding buds, the proper scions may be a challenging in the spring. But throughout the summer is good. I just find August when the heat, maybe late July, the August heat and the rains, it's a little more challenging for success because of the fungus problems. So right now I'm getting, fall. I love it right now, but then the problem becomes if the cold fronts come down early and if they're bad, they could affect my graphs too. So. so last question, tell us about the scions. I'm picking the scions you were just mentioning. I know you want to make to there. Well, you want a little swelling in the buds. That's not, that's not ready. Um, come here and look at this. I just did this a week, you know, two weeks ago. See that bud right there? Yeah. That's a nice bud on a scion. This is too far along. Okay. If, I, I mean, I've already grafted it, so it's okay. It's starting to push a little bit. But if I were just looking at this and it wasn't a graft and said, is this appropriate? I would not because I don't like that push. That might open in a couple Even of days. Even though that one's good? I, yeah. Well, I probably wouldn't choose it. But it might be okay because this will die off and that might pop out. But and it still might work. It just cuts your success rate. Yeah. Down. Okay. So Anything to one, get fungus like that's too far gone. That's yeah. That's too far. That's going to open like in a day, and I don't want that to happen. You can also look for swellings on side buds. So if you're really hard up for scions, cut off the terminal bud, and that'll cause shoots on the side. You can. Those are good. All right. Well, thank you for having us come out. And everybody, this is Hidden Acres Farms. If you want to get some mangoes and mango trees, they sell mango trees here as well. I'll put their link below. Seven gallons. Seven gallons. Three gallons in the back. Juicy peach. There's a. Uh, you have Super Alfonso. Alfonso. You have everything, Super right? Julie. Uh, a mishmash of a little bit of everything. Yeah. Is there anything yet you don't have that you want to get, or that you're going to get real soon? I mean, different varieties? Yeah, any variety. Like, Nothing like oh, I got to get that variety. People are asking, but I don't have it yet. Not no. really. I think I got... So you pretty, pretty much got everything you want. There's too many out there to try and chase them all, so... Currently, from your sales this past year, what's been your, like, top two most popular mango trees to sell? Easily Pickering and Carry, because when people come in and say, they ask me, um, those are my two most productive and most popular. Um... If you put those in your yard, I'm pretty confident you're going to get mangoes. There's a lot of other great varieties, great flavors, but maybe not as productive uh, or as consistent. So if they ask me, that's the two I pick, and that's what people tend to buy the most, um, especially on their starter trees. So, yeah, that's I love those two trees. And these, these are – people need to hear this. We're at Hidden Acres Mango Farm here. People need to hear this. These are seven gallons that if you go anywhere else, I'll be honest with everybody, if you go anywhere else, these are going to be in a 15-gallon pot. And look at these seven gallons, how they look. Yeah, because they're, they're you can't fast. find this anymore these days because even a three gallons like nothing. And uh, to find a seven gallon this high up is yeah, yeah, very hard to find. Ever it's, since COVID, yeah. it's like there's been a shortage of you know fruit trees in general, not just mangoes, but especially mangoes with any size to them. So yeah. now, is that just because of your you know your great passion for mangoes, or just because you're lazy that you have these great deals for people? I just don't push the mango sales a whole lot until they get to a nice size. We're gonna probably gonna, I'm not normally open um, except by appointment off season, you know, other than when the mangoes are ripe. So we'll probably be open mid-November for like a mango tree sale. Um, and we just kind of hold on to them, let them grow, let them get mature. 
Um, we don't have that many compared to big growers. You know, we, it's me and my wife doing most of this grafting the small stuff. So we're not in a hurry to sell them just yet, but I like them to be nice and rooted before people get them. So. As with the seedlings, does your bark, bark graft work well on the seedlings as well? Or are those better for a veneer graft or something else? We we do almost all cleft. Cleft, cleft. cleft. Yeah. yeah I, the first year I worked for Steve, I kept track of every graft I did. I kept track of the moon. I kept track of everything. <laughs> and I didn't get any difference in clefts and veneers. But since then, I found it's just if you get a good match, the, vene uh, the cleft seems to leave a lesser scar initially. It and it, it works really well. And I um, I prefer to use a cleft on a, on a seedling. But not, use a not, a, not a bark on a seedling. or possibly. I have. And I was in Barbados this summer doing some grafting. Steve donated scions, and some of the rootstock had gone too long. It's pretty woody, so I was doing okay. little bar graphs on them. All right, well, great. And we had good success until the guys who were watering started using a hose on everything and not watering the soil, watering the tree. And then we started to get rot in our grafts. And that, that old problem of too much water in the graft joint causing fungus problem. Wow. Well, this is great. Thanks for having us come on out here. And uh, yeah, uh, you can see other videos that I've done here at the link below. And definitely get on out here. And uh, when you come, if he's not too busy, these trees are in the front. Maybe he could, you could see how they, well they're growing from the grass. But uh, when now you're closed for mango sales. You're still open for mango tree sales? I'm uh, not open every day. We're just okay. kind of a part-time thing until we start picking mangoes. Um, if they go to our website, they get a text me on that number and we'll do an appointment for tree sales. But we'll probably be open a couple times during November, December, in case someone's looking to do some gifts for the holidays. Okay. But they can contact you through the website. Yeah, yeah. And you mentioned that. I mean, gifts, it's the greatest gift you can give a homeowner is a tree. <laughs> it's wonderful. Yeah. All right. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Have a great day. Sure. All right, everybody. There it was. That was Ken teaching us how to bark wrap at Hidden acres mango farm and a great farm great guys and great information so i'm going to start experimenting with that and like ken was saying in the video just practice so i have this big lemon meringue tree so now's not the best time because when it gets colder it's not the best time to graft but you know i'm going to take one off and just practice and see how it goes and uh see what comes from it all right practice makes perfect so Keep practicing and let me know how your results are and I'm hoping this video helped you a lot. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe and check out my other videos. And if you have a yard and you want me to come check it out, uh, just uh, contact me below. My email's below. Until then, everybody, have a great day and keep growing.